And the things that I want you guys to get today is what do all these people do? How do they all make something called the G2? All right? So that's where we're going to start. We're going to start with a few young people that have kind of been around. They've been with us for almost two years now. And they work with us every single day. So they know what we're like. They know what we stand for. And they know what we're trying to do. So we figured that the best people that you wanted to hear from were people from, from your own peer group. Not, not an old guy and not a bunch of Mazungus, but actually somebody who is actually living this. Right? So, how? Um, I'll start off with my very first day in the GD. I remember the, the first day I was dropped from my dad. And I was dropped from his brown palette. <coughs> and the very first meeting he told me, he gave me a list of five things. <coughs> and I was told to complete them by the day. I knew nothing. Literally nothing. And I was like, after that meeting I went out, I called my dad, I was like, wow. Because <laughs> this is so tough. But through the years, two years later, here we are, growing, uh, improving in our areas. And uh, like I said, Jiri is going to, it's giving the young people opportunities to show their capability and giving them a world class stage to show their skills. Okay. Um, thank you, Alan. So I'm going to start from a little bit back in 2016 when. Um, my mom and I came to the university and I was admitted as a computer science student. I knew nothing about computer science. That was the first time I had heard about the course, but I was told, you know what, this is where the world is headed towards. If you take this course, you will be okay. So I got admitted. Um, a lot of hard work and smart work got involved for a couple of years. Um, and then I graduated in 2020. Just before my graduation, one of my friends from the university, I would say a schoolmate called Kelvin Masharia, he was in the Department of IT, texted me and he was like, hey Alice, I know you do a lot of web development, are you interested in getting a job as a software developer? And I was like, yes, I would like to try. Even if I don't get the job, I learn how to do the interview. So I took the opportunity. That evening I received an email. At first I got to a spam email from Aaron Esla, my current CTO. Um, a very long and intensive interview process later, I found a home, I have found parents, I have found new mentors, and it's been an exciting journey. So um, part of our process with Alan today will be giving you some little nuggets of wisdom on what I wish someone told me back then when I was in school. Yeah. So the first thing is, you are what you feel in your mind. You know, this is a very uh, basic question that people can ask themselves. So what do you feel in your mind? What do you learn in your mind? You know, um, there's, a, there's a saying in Japan that you don't dance to your mind. You don't dance to your mind. So the very first thing we're going to talk about from the doctor uh, and now so I got a job through one of my friends here at the university. So networking starts when you're still here. Who is your secret? They you know someone that you don't know. So start networking here slowly and then eventually your network becomes global or international and you get to interact with a lot more people who will lead you to better job opportunities, business opportunities or faster innovations and advancement sorry, in your life. Still on the power of networking? Quick question, how well are you connected with the lecturers? Are you friends? Are you enemies? How well are you connected to your other friends who are doing our contest dance? You know, these are some of the methods that you should love. Don't burn bridges, don't burn these bridges of friendships. A lecturer should be your best friend. This is someone who is teaching your content. You should spend most of the day with him or her because he has every knowledge and can scale you up to the industry. You know, Jiri have a scene, we want to uh, conduct ac the academic industry. Like I said, we're fresh, uh, fresh students from the university, no experience, no nothing. But our boss there has tried to show us the way we are in Africa and how we can connect from academia and industry and how we can connect. Yeah. Our next point is going to be on the roads of learning. When you go to college, you have to do is revise and then do the exam. 
Well, 99% of the times we forget. I remember recently I went on having to my video and telling him we learned about all these um, patterns, development patterns in school, and he goes, like, which one do you know? And then I'm there with my big guns, the bridge pattern, and then he goes, tell me something about it. I knew nothing about it because um, as soon as I finished my last exam, I forgot. But um, when it comes to life, you don't just need to read for your exams, and that's it. You actually need to learn a skill set that you will go presenting in front of Mark, Aaron, Carol, or whoever will be interviewing you, or whoever will be looking to hire you for a certain opportunity. So they go this way. You need to keep an open mind. Um, when I first graduated, um, my favorite lecturer here in Kemati, Kagiri, he was a PhD developer. So I learned a lot of PHP. We went through a lot of courses on Udemy, on Laravel, and all that. So Aaron let me do the interview, and um, until after the interview was done, he would tell me we are a JavaScript company. So I had to spin up the wheel all over again and start. Um, well, I worked as a software developer for a whole year, and then Mark came knocking. <laughs> And he told me, you're no longer going to work as a software developer, I want you to explore other things. Um, in the course of the last two years, I've explored being a business analyst, I've worked as a scrum master, I've worked as a project manager, I've participated in business intelligence tasks using Power BI, um, I've done software training, by the way, and besides that, I'm currently working with Mark to help build out the software augmentation side of the business where hopefully I will see you all soon. So you need to keep a very open mind on what you're going to learn. It's okay to learn a skill that is totally different from what you're being taught in school. It's okay to meet a concept you've never seen before. I've gotten to see things like, for example, RPA or COFA. Those are things I never had until when I got into this company. So. Um, my very important point is keep a very open mind. Um, I'm very happy I'm a graduate of the um, <laughs> I'm actually completed my studies uh, last year December and got an opportunity to join the GIC program. So, which program? Oh, sorry, I was doing a course in Bachelor of Science in Information Technology in IT. I see my classmates. <laughs> So, um, when I joined the G2, I never knew anything about web development. I was coming from a different background, that is Android development. So, I got to the G2. I met Alice. Alice was our mentor back then. So, she tells us that I'm going to teach you web development in three months. So, I'm like, front end, back end, advanced stuff in three months. Okay. So, training. It's a big challenge. But to get into something, you have to go with a scrap because, of course, it takes skills within you to get back to that system. So, these are the training needs. We are taken through a three months course. We will be introduced from basic concept of programming. So, you don't need to be having a background in IT or IT related course. So, after the training, you can get an opportunity to join the team, like I did in the example So, um, what I do at the team is right now, I'm an instructor, I'm a trainer, I'll be responsible for taking you through the course. I have uh, trained here, I've trained before, from previous schools, that is school 3 and 5. So, that's how the training is going to happen, and it's a chance for you to improve, it's a chance for you to gain an opportunity to work with these amazing people, is a chance for you to get an opportunity to start building your young career and progress on the Do I get any paperwork sure that I've done training? Yeah, you get a paperwork, you get a certificate, you can apply it LinkedIn. Okay. According to your statistics that you have on the six calls, are these people placing in big institutions or why do you think that they just play around? Okay. So from the first court, we brought all apps of the G2 and they work with these amazing people you can see. So you can also get a chance to work with this. So from the previous call that came in, we also took people from the schools that did their best and proved to us that they, are, they can be part of our community. If someone wants to register, what is the next call? 
the next court is happening soon. So we have another court actually starting Monday. We can have a court here at Kimadi, we have a court at the <coughs> office, we can have as many courts as you want us to train. How can they register? To register, you will send your CV to our amazing HR, Karo Mwangi. So, uh, Karo Mwangi at the g2.com, that is our email. So, you send your CV, you will be scheduled for an interview, you will attend an interview with any of us and our HR. And then after that, you will be communicated how you will join the training, how you can start the training, and how you are going to progress and receive resources from the g so that you can be successful. As is as in plastic care, as someone is working, in the bottom of us, we have Mr. Mark and Mr. Manuka. We will be around because the architects are about to be right here. It's about to make sure who is meant to invest in it. This connects back to the public networking. If you have a good relationship with your lecturer, he or she turns out to be your mentor. So that's, those two are connected, public networking and mentorship. So it's really, really important to build good relationships with the classmates and also with the lecturers. Yeah, um, the power of mentorship relies on the fact that someone went through your struggle and they made it. So that means they will help you get to your destiny with lesser obstacles and distractions. So it's very important to have a, a mentorship program. For example, through my lecturer Hadithi. Let me tell you guys how raw it was. I would be number one in my class all the time. I actually have the four certificates. But I knew nothing about software development. So I would go to his office and I would be like, I want to learn programming. And I would start crying because I'm like, I understand math, I understand, I understand every other language except when we are going to do C exam, C plus class and all that. Okay, if you look at my transcript, you'll actually see where I was struggling with the most. Um, and at some point in that year, he started introducing me to some of the students here in Kimathi who are already, sorry, some of the former students in Kimathi who are already in the industry. So I started getting mentorship from people working in social companies and they would tell me it's not that hard, um, you can follow this route, it's easier and all that. I still get mentorship from them today, they are still very good friends of mine. So yes, it's very, very important for you to look for a mentor, look for someone to hold your hand for this journey. One thing that uh, Mr. Mark Allen says, successful people, they don't do much. They don't, uh, they, don't need to, they don't need to do much. They only do what, they only, there's only one secret that they do. The small things, they pay big, big attention to them. It's called attention to the small details. How are you attention to your timekeeping, high dressing uh, when you attend these lectures, how still about the relationship with your peers and also the uh, lecturers, all these things. It's called, it's called paying attention to the small details. Okay, um, because of time, we'll just add one more point. Um, this one is quite um, correct. It's setting the standards high. When I see Esther, she's out. When I see Esther, she's here talking all confidence and all that. You're like, I want to be like her. Or when you see Mark or someone else, you is that feeling you want to be like her. That means there's a standard she's reached that you really admire and you want to get yourself there. So what are those things that you need to do to raise your standard? It starts from small things like treating your time with respect. Um, you don't have classes 24-7. What do you do with the in-between? Set aside like two hours to practice on that skill set that you like. Um, try to make positive choices every day. I know that is very hard, but try to make positive choices every day. Try to practice self-control all the way from when do you wake up? There's no bell now in the university. There's no one who can wake up apart from you to be attending an exam at a certain point. Um, there's this book Karen and I were talking about yesterday, the 5 a.m. club. Successful people don't wake up at 12. They wake up early and they set aside time to do some of the things um, that are important to them. And then there's this one um, I really love. Still on setting your standards high. 
So um, when I get when I got in campus, I couldn't address anyone in English like I'm doing right now. It was all Swahili and my mother tongue. So my roommate and I decided that from now on, we will be speaking English. So it's very very awkward by the way because you go to class and uh, everyone is like, I why can't you just use Shang or this other languages that they're using? But it's coming very. 